I'm Bree. I'm an alcoholic. It's so good to see everybody on here. Um, my sobriety date is October 11th of 2020. So I just celebrated three years. Um, I have a home group, I have a sponsor, and I work the steps. Um, I'm so grateful that um, I get to be a part of this and speak tonight. Um, I kind of want to go um, on my story a little bit. Um, and every time I get to speak, it's like I kind of get to think back about what it used to be like and what it's like now. And that is such a beautiful thing. Um, so I got sober back in 2020. I grew up on Zoom. Um, that was all that was really available to me at the time that I got sober. And boy, was that hard. Um, it's so awesome that there is both hybrid options and in-person options now. Um, but at the time, that wasn't possible for me. So um, I really had to find my network where I could. Um, I I started drinking whenever I was 14. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic home. Um, so it was kind of difficult for me to navigate um, the pains of growing up without a solution at the time. Um, I had a pretty short binge for about four years, um, but that was enough for me to hit rock bottom. Um, and thank God that I did. I don't think that I would have made it if I didn't hit bottom at that point. Um, I had the opportunity to um, kind of have a door into AA before I even came. I knew that I was an alcoholic um, from a young age. Like now I know that I was an alcoholic, had those tendencies and stuff, you know, like I used to do things that were considered abnormal or weird. Um, and I didn't really know what it was at the time. Um, I guess that I'll kind of go into my teenage years because that's really whenever things started to pick up. Um, I, you know, had the typical like straight A, um, good in sports, you know, like had a good friend group and that all kind of fell off as soon as I took my first sip of alcohol. Um, because once I had one sip, like I couldn't get enough of it. Um, I was a binge drinker and, um, I would black out, blackout drinker. I'd get into parties and I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, and my life went from, having this perfect image or what I thought was a perfect image to um, being homeless and not being able to support myself, losing friendships, family members, um, losing those relationships. Um, and it was really difficult for me because I didn't know that AA was an option. You know, I didn't know that somebody at 18 years old could get sober. I thought that that was for <laughs> for those people, you know, I didn't know that that was an option for me. Um, so it all came down to my last night and my last drink. And, um, it was really painful. You know, it was those feelings of embarrassment and humiliation and just the dread that fills you. Um, all the way to the core like it was miserable um and I woke up the next day and I knew that I had to do something different you know like I had thrown so many opportunities out the window and I knew that I was the only one that could do anything different you know like nobody could do it for me there wasn't somebody that was gonna come save the day and I was hoping for that I was hoping that I wouldn't have to give up drinking or I wouldn't have to admit that I might have done something wrong um because I wanted it to be everybody else's fault. And so once I got over myself enough to say enough is enough, um, I walked into my first meeting and, well, actually I didn't get to walk into my first meeting. I logged onto my first meeting and the sense of relief that came over me was unexplainable. Like there's no way that I can sit here and explain like how 
that felt, but I'm sure a lot of other people in this room may have felt that as well whenever they went into their first meeting. Um, but whenever I started in the program, I was really confused. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just knew that I had a problem. Um, I got with some pretty cool ladies and they kind of guided me through this. That's just where I started. You know, I started in the big book um, and I just took suggestions, you know, like, okay, 90 meetings in 90 days. Like um, that was difficult, but I'm like, I'll do it if that means that I'm not going to die. Um, Cause that was where I was at. Like I was on the verge of dying. Um, and I went through and started at step one, the very beginning of the book, um, and shut my mouth long enough to listen and hear what people were telling me to do. Um, and then it, it was like, before I knew it, I was at 30 days and it, I just blinked and it happened. And the only way that I can explain that was that I just believed that there was something that could help. There was something different that I hadn't already tried. You know, like I ran out of options. Um, and time just kept going and I just kept doing what I was told. It was like, um, I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. Um, it was like, get on your knees and pray. Okay, I'll do it. You know, like I was, I was so miserable. Um, start opening up to meetings, um, talking about what's going on. Okay, I'll do that. Um, call people every day. Okay, I'll do that too. Like there were a lot of suggestions and I was just desperate for anything to fix me. And um, the first year of my sobriety was really difficult um, navigating my childhood that I kind of lost because of all of these emotions and then the drinking that picked up like I lost like, I, I didn't know what I loved to, I didn't have any hobbies or interests or anything like that um but I just knew the A was for me I just knew that it, it, there was something that would help um I struggled a lot in the beginning with the God idea um but I just did it anyways you know like um I, um, there's a lot of stuff that's changed since I've gotten into AA and it is such a beautiful thing. Um, and the one part that I didn't know that was going to happen that did happen for me was that I got to help people, you know, like newcomers. Um, I get to do that today. Like I get to open my arms to somebody who went through the same thing as me. And that was something that I never thought that I'd be able to do. Um, and, you know, like I, I, I got to go to college, you know, I got to mend relationships with my family and I still get to do that today. I get to work on relationships. Um, that is something that I really never thought would happen. Um, I was stubborn in my ways and I finally let go of old ideas and I get to do that today. I get to um, go and visit people that I thought I was never going to talk to again. Um, and right now, like my sobriety journey has been a lot of different places. Um, I've been in the deep, dark bouts of my own mind that have kind of convinced me that um, maybe AA isn't right for me, or maybe there, maybe I can have another drink, you know, like I've been in that place. Um, and I've also been in the place of it can't get much better than this, you know, like that's just something that, um, is a part of sobriety that I've got to experience. And I've learned something from every step of the way. Um, I've gotten to look back at my childhood in my fourth step. I've gotten to look at my resentments and work through those. Um, I've gotten to speak at events and at meetings, and that is another amazing thing that I'm super grateful for. Um, and I've gotten to experience the promises that they read at the beginning of this meeting. 
Um, and that's a beautiful thing for anybody to experience, but especially someone like me who didn't think that that was possible, you know, like I didn't think that I had anything worth living for. Um, drinking does that to me. Um, I'm an alcoholic through and through, and I know that one sip won't be my last. One more will never be my last. Um, Cause I like I had drank myself to oblivion the first time. And I am so grateful that I have not had to go through that again. Um, so whenever I think about all of the things that I've gotten to experience in sobriety in my story, um, the one thing that seems to be consistent is willingness. Um, really, as long as I'm willing, then God will hold my hand and walk with me. You know, like I don't have to experience things alone. Um, as long as I'm willing, I get to experience the gifts of AA and, um, be able to look back on my story as an opportunity to grow instead of something to be ashamed of. Um, it's only through willingness that I continue to grow through this program and I continue to grow through Iskipa and finding a network there. Um, it's really hard to get sober young. Um, it's possible, but like the network and the fellowship of young people is so important. Um, and really, I have just recently gotten a glimpse of that um, being in Iskipa and on a committee. Like I've gotten to do some different things in sobriety um, to expose me to more of the younger side of AA. Um, man, it's just such a great thing to be able to be here. And um, I really am grateful for all of the things that have happened to me, um, for me, um, even whenever I was kicking and screaming, you know, even whenever I didn't want to do the work, I didn't want to accept help. I didn't want to walk with God and find my higher power. Um, and then be able to rely on that power. Um, willingness is the, that keeps me here. Um, because those thoughts do come up, you know, like those, um, resentments still come up. And, um, so I think that I'm going to stop here. Um, but that's my topic tonight is willingness. So thank you guys so much for letting me share and for listening. Um, I appreciate all of you. Love you lots and lots.